want to say amen and amen. I want you to turn to the book of John, John chapter 1, John chapter 1. Uh, there's, a, there's a word there that God has for us tonight. John chapter 1 uh, was also spoken this morning. Uh, and it's, it's amazing how our, our word this year is to learn and, and return, to learn the word of God and return. And basically our, uh, our preacher this morning, who was a visiting preacher, he actually uh, mentioned a lot you, uh, on the word of God. You got to sing the word, speak the word. And the word all the way through it was like meditate on the word the whole entire thing and uh encouraging us to get into the word and this was one of the the, the verses that he brought up and in the beginning yeah, the word was with god and the word was god and the word was god uh, he was with god in the beginning and through him all things were made without him nothing was made that has been made can you say amen uh, and this this is the word jesus christ that is uh come through but i want you to uh, move to uh, verse 10 Verse 10 there that has, has this important uh, uh, verses there for us. It says, he was in the world. Let's say he was in the world. He was in the world. Uh, he was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. How many of us, of us do not recognize that Jesus is around? Amen. Amen. He is already in our midst, even as, as we come in this morning uh, tonight. And it says, he was in the world, but the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. No, but our message tonight that uh, is, is pertaining to even what, what's, what's going on, it's thrown in a world of fear and chaos. Amen. We need Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, thrown in a world of fear and chaos. Uh, even as you're, you're in this time, never in the history of Australia, even right from the day, we've ever had a lockdown like this, you know, uh, blocking all our borders. Uh, things just happening to and fro, a spread of a virus that is totally going right through. We have uh, stock markets around the world that have lost trillions of dollars, the value of it. Uh, uh, entire cities that have been quarantined at this very moment. We know it, that uh, every single city quarantined, lockdowns. People that come in 14 days uh, in quarantine. Uncertainty, fear, worry comes upon us. It's gone, it's gone viral. And these things are throwing us into that, that world of uh, uh, fear and chaos. And, and a point number one that I want to bring to us tonight is when people lack understanding. Let's say understanding. Uh, when people lack understanding, fear fills the blanks. When people lack understanding, I'll get to this because this is really helpful. Even in this time that we're there, where uh, uh, you would you would go through a uh, culture shock or go, man, what do I do? Uh, uh, and and it's, uh, when people lack that understanding, there's a blank that comes in, and what fills that blank is fear. Uh, but uh, that's when we don't have, have understanding. That's when we don't have the word of God. And is a uh, saying that what to do when we don't know what to do. Now, what do you do when you don't know what to do? It's like straight away, what is to fill that blank? It's understanding of the Word of God. Can you say amen? Uh, we need the Word of God to be in us. Uh, and this is an encouragement. When fear comes upon you, then obviously the Word is not in us. Understanding, it's a lack of understanding. But when we have that understanding, we know that, uh, that, that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. Can you say amen? Now uh, That He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. But we need to take that Word on uh, and believe. That, that, that word is, is the word of God. In fearful times, we need to lean into the shepherd. Let's say shepherd. Now, we need to lean into him. Now, that even when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Let's say shepherd. Now, let's all say it together. I know this is a tough time, but let's say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, I shall not be at one. Let's say it together. Uh, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Uh, so even in this time that you're going through this, it's like in fearful times, we need to lean into God uh, and, and take that word. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, now, as these guys were saying to me, uh, 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 I think there's a lockdown on Tuesday. Straight away, I was thinking about my leaves and it was no more leaves. Uh, you know, things that are happening. What do you do when you're going through this? But straight away, the word of God has already come through that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in one. Uh, I shall not be in one when I come to my mortgage. Amen. I shall not be in one and this and that. The answer was already given to us yesterday in the men's fellowship. Uh, and some of us today, but we're not sure yet. We're going to see tomorrow. God's laughing. He knows what I'm talking about. 
No, but what, what we're saying is like uh, having that word. Are you in fearful times? Are you in fear of losing this, losing that? That the, but God is saying you need to lean into the shepherd. Can you say amen? amen. Now, when there is a lack of understanding, then fear fills the blanks. Right. Now, but we need to remind ourselves, God, the word of God, I shall not fear. I shall not want. I know that the Lord, that he has created me new pastors. I'm going to confess that word in Jesus' name. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He was with you in 2010. He is with you in 2020. Can you say amen? amen? He was with you right from the time that you were born. And you need to keep reminding yourself, hey, I need this understanding. I need to lock it down. I need to have that understanding. Because if there's a blank, fear comes in. And who brings fear? The enemy brings the fear. Now, you need to understand and keep reminding yourself that you are the Lord's pride. Let's say the Lord's pride. Now, you are the Lord's pride. Do we really believe that? Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Now, we are the Father's beloved. Let's say beloved. Do you really believe that the Father loves you? And he goes, you look at that verse and go, for God so loved you. He loved me. He gave his one and only begotten son. You are God, the Father's beloved. Now, you are to be dwelling in the spirit, not in the flesh. And you say, amen. amen. This is the times when you need to be in the spirit of God. You need to be in the dwelling place where Colossians says in chapter 3, that set your minds on things above. And you say, amen, church. Amen. Uh, set your mind on things above where who? Where Christ is seated on the right hand side of the Father. And our minds need to be there. And it says even in uh, Psalms 91, I want you to start memorizing that. Start taking it. He who dwells in the most high shall rest in the what? Shadow of the Almighty. He shall rest in the secret place. How many of us are fearful? Christians shouldn't be fearful at this time. It's a time where you are resting. When you are in the spirit of God, there is no room for Satan to come and give you that fear. Oh, what about this? What about this? I have some people say, I'm worried about if I get the coronavirus, how am I going to feed my kid? Your God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Right. And you say amen. amen. Uh, and that sickness, you got to step it up and say, God, I am not going to change anything. I was the same one, and I'm going to keep going and declaring your word because you are God that promises yeah. that he who dwells shall rest. Can you say amen, church? Amen. No, and God is not surprised. He is still at work. That's right. Can you say amen? amen. He is still at work. Like it's even if you don't feel him not working, you know the song, he is the way maker. Even though you might not see him not working, like uh, he says, he never stops. Let's say never stops. Uh, he never stops. He never stops. He never stops working. Now, and here it says here that even though the world, in, uh, it says he was in the world and though the world was made for him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. But to those who received him, who received him? Did you receive him? Say yes. yes. Uh, I want you to declare, I received Christ. Uh, and he goes, those who received him, he gave them the right to become children of God. And you say, Amen, church. Amen. Uh, you are a child of the living God. Look at chapter 13, it says, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat at the lake. Such large crowds gathered him, and he spoke about the seed, the one that was in the path, and all this. And then his disciples come through and they go, How can we understand this? How can we uh, come to understand what is the seed being choked and whatever it is? And Jesus explains it right on chapter, uh, or on verse 37, he says, He answered, the one who sowed the good seed. Let's say the one who sowed the good seed. Now, uh, who is that? He is the son of who? Man. Son of man. That is God that's sowing the seed. Now look at the field. The field is the what? The world. Let's say the world. Now, uh, the, the field is the world. And the good seed stands for who? People. Okay, we're not really listening to this one. Uh, the good seed stands for who? People. People of God. Uh, who is answering this question? This is Jesus Christ. And he is saying, you and I are the good seed. We are planted in that place so that we will grow. And even the people around us, they feed on us. Yes. They recognize that Christ is within you. That even when the world is going through chaos, they look at Sion and they go, man, I will be like that guy. Why is he so happy? He's not worried about his bills. Why? Because understanding is within him. 
There is no plant for any fear. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Uh, and this is a, a part where I looked at it and I said, Thank you, God, that I'm a seed sown by Jesus Christ, that I'm sown into the world to let the light shine at such a time as this. Amen. Uh, when people are going through a hard time, I can see uh, uh, it's, it's amazing that even worldly people are texting next to neighbors and they're saying, Hey, if you need anything, I'm right here for you. My wife had that last week. Ah, isn't that coming? Do you see how big this kingdom is that God has? Uh, that people are like texting you and all this. But I'm encouraging you, even go over to your neighbor or whatever it is, even if you keep that distance, but still you can show them some love, whatever it is. I had some uh, brother Sione come through and he had a whole box of eggs. He goes, you want some of these? You got any toilet rolls? I got toilet rolls, man. Uh. Well, some of us need to come together and go, hey, even the things that you are lacking, some other people in your church are lacking these things because, hey, I can give some of this. Anybody else need any sanitizer or whatever it is? Let's bring it in. This is where the children of God need to come together. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Now, God, do not be surprised. God, God is not surprised at anything. He is still at work. Yeah. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Uh, and He is reminding His church to come together. Church, I want you to know this. And look at that, uh, in that verse, uh, that uh, recognized him, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to those who received him, he gave him the right. And look at that, verse 14, the word became flesh. Let's say the word became flesh. Word became uh, flesh. And made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, son who is full of grace and truth. Let's say grace. grace. Uh, this God of yours is full of grace. Uh, he's full of truth that he loves each and every one of us. He's saying to us, don't you worry about this. Things are going to get all right. Things are going to go well for each and every one of us. But we need to know this. Um, we need to understand that God is not surprised with the coronavirus. And you say, amen. amen. He already knows what the ending is. Uh, but he wants you to know if you have faith, if you believe that God knows all this, that you're going to stick to God. Uh, that we, we are going to stick in our faith. God, I may not understand this, but I will not be shaken. Amen. I will not be uh, sifted by the enemy. They, uh, uh, Jesus was saying to, uh, to Simon, you know, the enemy came to sift you, but I keep praying for you. Jesus is praying for you right here, right now, interceding for each and every one of us. Can you say amen, church? Amen. Uh, and the last point that I want to bring to you tonight is that God will not violate his word. Why don't we say violate together? Violate. Let's say violate. 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 God will not violate His word. No. Yeah, we need to use the word daily. You are taking God at His word. Can you say amen? amen. Now, this is one thing that is one of the most powerful things that I've taken on in, in my life. Even not only learning in this church, is taking the word of God and actually declaring the word of God. Uh, last year, I remember uh, uh, sitting in my sitting room and, uh, and before Sister and uh, Emmanuel came up to me and said to me, uh, 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 Sila, you know, you're, you're ready for the house up there. And um, at that time, I, I can tell you, I can literally tell you that I came on uh, February and, uh, and I had my immigration papers and I was so worried. I was like, man, there is no more money. That money is actually like, to I actually saved up a lot of money for it, but it was like just going even overtime was gone. And I was going, God, it's past February. And you know, that's when I was supposed to get these papers. But anyway, I, I, I just decided to, let's forget about the papers. I don't want any more residents now. I just want to make it through paycheck after paycheck. And I was coming through, I hit in June, and I was still looking at it. And I actually was totally worried in my heart. I sat in my sitting room and my mum bought this present and it had uh, Jeremiah 29, uh, 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 11, and you guys know the verse. But this verse, you would preach it every time. But this verse just became so real in my life at that time. So as I came to this, this August, uh, well, July, when these guys had come through, and I was going, there's no way I'm going to come up with that 5,140. See, I can even remember the figure for these immigration papers. I go, even if I got my residence, I can't even pay this money. There is no way in this whole wide world that I can pay this money. And these guys come through and they said, hey, you're ready for the house up there. We got all this. Long story short, the whole thing approved. And the bank gave me 130000 100000 for the house, 30000 for the two cars. And then as I paid these cars of 18000 there was still 12000 uh, 12, left on this whole thing. And straight away, and it came right on that time, just before the men went on their break. And I can still remember getting that letter. You know, you got your residence. 
but you need to pay this. Right on that moment, God had the money right there to pay this money, this, this whole entire thing. Isn't God so good? Can you say amen? Uh, he is still at work. But through this time, I can remember looking at this verse, and I can tell you, when you are so stressed, it's like I, I absolutely just sit there, I'm totally like, God, why in the world did you even make me start these papers? You should have just, but God likes to take you through it. It's for His glory. Can you say amen? So that he, we can testify to one another. Hey, this God does not violate His word. And I was looking at this verse and God goes, look at that verse, look at it. You know that I have a plan for you. It's a plan not to harm you, but it's a plan to prosper you. It's a plan to give you hope and a future. Amen. Can you say amen, church? Amen. And God is going, I will never violate my word. And I want to remind you, even if you're a pastor, whatever you are, a pastor is just stuffing that stuck on. But I need you to live by faith. And I'm sitting there and I looked at that verse. Tears came rolling down. I go, okay, God, I believe I want to declare that word. Declare that word. Coming through. As I declare that word, this come through. Then everything went through. And God goes, see, that's another one. When mom got sick and there's a sickness right underneath her leg. And the only thing God was saying, pull aside and start praying. We started praying. And all the others that were in the house, they were going, we know that the, the message of God said, healing is coming. And I come this year, that whole entire thing was scanned. The whole entire whatever it is, there was big, massive, bogging thing is totally removed. Why? Because of the King of Kings. That's right. Amen. And God is going, declare His word, declare His word. Even as we go through coronavirus in the name of Jesus, we declare that it's out of our families. Can you say amen? amen. Now, and God is like going, hey, look, we've got to comply to this. You've got to put, start putting that, that paint around that house. Sister mentioned this last week, comply. Uh, by putting this whole thing, paint the, the walls and, and whatever it is. Those who don't paint the, 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 the lambs, the blood on those, on those door frames, they will get affected. So God is saying even to us that we need to apply this. We need to declare it in Jesus' name that He is a God that does not violate His word. Can you say amen? amen. Now we need to know that God honors His word. Let's say honors. Amen. Now God honors His word. But faith is built up as we speak the word. Can you say amen, church? Uh, God has given us a gift of faith. Where is that written? In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, you already know that. And we are saved by grace through faith. So it's a gift that God is giving us. But look at this. Confessing the word of God brings faith needed for each situation. What situation are you going through? Are you worried about toilet paper? Are you worried about this? Are you worried about bills? Are you worried about that? God already knows what you're worried about. You know, God, I can't handle this. I bring it into your hands. Can you say amen, church? Amen. And I declare it in the name of Jesus. Uh, belief activates the miracle working faith. Can you say amen? amen. Uh, and this is moving in. As you declare this, something builds up in your life. It's like, man, faith comes up. It starts to build up. You know, like uh, through this whole situation, uh, I started to see people like going on 10-day fastings. Uh, going on this and that, you know, they, they go crazy and I, and, I, and I stood there and I said Why am I gonna try and do something? It's almost like I'm trying to win God's favor. God already loves us That's right. Amen. So I'm not going on any day 10 day fasting Because I'm going God you're the one that allowed this. I already did my 10 day fasting past, But I'm saying God it's in your hands. It's out of my hands. I only believe that you are right here but if you tell me to fast, I will go through fasting. But I will not be like going, I'm trying to earn my salvation. I'm trying to pump this finger. That God will. No, no, God already loves you no matter what. Can you say amen? Who believes in God's word? Amen. amen. God encourage you. God is saying to any, each and every one of us that, hey, God does not violate his word. Belief activates that miracle. Now, I want you to take this verse, this last verse before I finish on, on Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It goes, now to him, let's say to him, who was able to do. Okay. Now, this is a long word. Immeasurably more. Yeah. And above all we could ever ask. Uh, see even the things that you can have asked it's above anything that you can have asked and God is like it's saying it's above all that according to his power that is at work within you uh, let's say power uh, do you have the power of God uh, all these things are within God and God is saying now to him who, him, to him who is able to do uh, the things that you can't handle you're going God I declare it's in your name God, I have faith and I believe with all my heart 
that by the end of this year, this whole thing is going to be cleared out. I'm going to be debt free. Who believes that in Jesus' name? Yes. We have to believe in it. We have to declare it in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God does not violate His word. Can you say amen, church? Uh, are you thrown into a world of chaos? There's no more chaos. Why? Because I have Jesus in my heart. Uh, I have Jesus right here. He's walking with you. All I need to do, I need to lean onto the shepherd. Uh, whenever you feel fear, you go, God says that even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Uh, healing's going to come into your place. Even those, those finances are going to be paid. It is already paid right now as we speak. Uh, 18 billion already stimulus package. We just got to find out where it is. <laughs> and he's saying, man, uh, it's already given. But someone wants to go, where is it? I go, wait we'll till your bank and ask them. And then probably they'll give you something. And I want you to stand right now. And I want you to be strong in your faith. Why don't you lift up your hands wherever you are. And just declare that God is coming through for your situation. Can you say amen, church? Uh, what is